everybody. This is Dallas, and although I don't know her, I'm kind of mad at her. Uh, I saw her in a documentary from England about an organization, a charity, that pairs up younger people with socially isolated seniors, and that's what Dallas is. She's a socially isolated senior, and of course, no matter what age you are, social isolation is the worst. It's miserable for the individuals that are affected by it. There's growing evidence that it's not just loneliness. It affects your physical health, your mental health, your financial state, even. It's awful. But it's also awful for us as a society. Just about any social ill that you want to look at, from addictions to poverty to homelessness to crime, if you look underneath, you find social isolation as at least one of the root causes. And so it's costly in tangible ways, like health care and policing costs, but it's also costly because it it robs us of all the great contributions that the socially isolated individuals could be making to our world if they were just properly connected and supported. Which is why, of course, we want formal programs like the one helping Dallas in over there in England or government programs. We want those to be funded, but that's really not what I'm here to talk to you about today. What I want to explore is how someone like Dallas finds herself in the situation that she was in in the first place. So, in the documentary, Dallas says that for 47 years, she was married to the same man, they did everything together, he was her everything. And when he died after half a century, she was suddenly, that's the word she uses, suddenly just bereft, lonely. It got so bad that her doctor eventually had to refer her to this charity. And when I hear this story, my initial reaction is, what? For 50 years, you put all your social eggs in one basket, companionship, romantic love, friendship, you name it, you were all on this one guy, and then in old age he dies and you're shocked? That's not, that's not sudden. You could see that coming from a mile away. You can't have a healthy social life, you can't have good social resources if you don't invest in them for your entire adult life. Good social capital is built piece by piece over time. Interactions, relationships, trust. Slowly we get there by investing in these things. But those words I'm using, investing, capital, resources, we're not used to talking about our social lives that way. We think about our financial health and our physical health that way. We know that those are things that we need to put effort in to, to have a good life and be comfortable in our retirement. But social is softer. It's a nice to have. You should be popular, but you shouldn't have to work at it or anything. Uh, and beyond that, we have forces pushing us apart. Some folks have talked about it tonight. Consumer culture and the way our cities are built just subtly nudge us apart and make social isolation more and more easy to fall into without ever meaning to. So when I think about it, it's not really poor old Dallas that I'm mad at. It's a world that has turned into something of a Dallas factory, a world where we are all on the road to becoming just like her unless we do something drastic about it. And that's why I'm here to say we need to fight back. We need to push back against those forces that are pushing us apart in any way that we can. And I feel that there are really two pieces to this. The first piece is about individuals. Every individual in our society should have the same level of awareness and encouragement uh, in terms of building their social health. Everybody should know that this is something that they need to be doing all the time. Of course, just like physical health or financial health, that doesn't mean we're necessarily going to do it. Um, but we could at least take away that stigma. We could at least take away the double bind of that if you, if you are, if you, or if you don't have people, then you're a loser, and then you shouldn't work at it, or you're manipulative, or you're a slimy network, or you're pushy, or you're needy, or something. We need to give people tools. We need to have social skills, trainings available, programs, support. Um, and we need to take away the idea that your romantic partner or your immediate family should be your everything. But of course we know that individual behavior change is kind of a tough road to hoe. Um, so we also need part two which is to make society social again. 
Everything that we do, every system, every organization, every place, every activity has a social component to it, whether we acknowledge it or not. And we need to get smarter and more sophisticated and more intentional about leveraging that. You shouldn't have to have like a master's in human interaction just to not get isolated. Uh, it should come naturally. It should be organic. You should develop your social capital as you go about your business. And there's any number of elements to this, but a couple that I'll just, just mention a couple. The first is the built form of our cities. So if we had more mixed use, dense, walkable areas, we would just run into each other repetitively as we go about our business, go to work, go to school, go to the store for milk. And those little interactions over and over is what builds a social fabric. It's not one swooping thing. It's a lot of little things. Another element is gatherings actually like this one. Too commonly, we just get everybody in a room and we have them stare straight ahead and or we dump them in a different room and say, make friends, figure it out. Uh, and a lot of people really don't like that and they're really not that good at it and they struggle with it and they stay in their seat, I saw you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> which is okay because it doesn't come naturally to everyone. We need to change that. We need to be smarter and have more facilitation. And actually, I'm going to start with you tonight. I'm going to invite you at the end of the program, go up to somebody you don't know or somebody you don't know very well and just say, which talk did you find most interesting? That's it. Just maybe it leads to a conversation, maybe it doesn't, but either way, you've made that little connection and it's lots of those that are going to get us there. Because nobody wants to be socially isolated at any time in their life, and especially not in those vulnerable later years. For myself, when I someday, hopefully after a long and fulfilling life, when I eventually die, I hope they pack the streets at my funeral. I hope I have so many connections right up to the end that people turn out in droves to celebrate my life. I think I deserve that, and I think you deserve that too. So let's make it happen. Woo!